back with another Backpacking Basics video here. Backpacking all, Basics. All bundled up here for Backpacking Basics. It's a beautiful Ohio, cool, crisp morning. Yeah, Mid-30s probably. And that got us thinking about what? We want to talk to you about sleeping systems, insulation, things like R value, fill power, and everything in between. Uh, so today's video, we're gonna talk all about different backpacking sleeping systems and about down insulation. Yeah, and just remember that this is backpacking basics, so. Not backpacking advanced. Not backpacking advanced, so we're gonna keep it a little bit more high level. So when talking about things like sleep systems, the biggest two things that get thrown around are sleeping bags versus sleeping quilts. Um, the biggest difference being a sleeping bag will totally encase you and usually has a little, a little hood thing um, versus sleeping quilts, something like this, it, it's, it's like a blanket with an embedded uh, foot box. Sleeping quilts have gained a lot of popularity in the last couple of years because they're a lot lighter than a sleeping bag and the, and the big idea behind a quilt versus a bag is down insulation gains all of its insulation power from the loft of the down. So, you know, th this is a Costco quilt, so there's not much loft in here, but how much space the down fills up. When you're sleeping in a sleeping bag, your back compresses the down that's underneath you and it really doesn't insulate you. So the all the fabric that's underneath you and all that down that's underneath you really doesn't keep you warm. So that's why there's been this shift to quilts and a quilt um, just goes right on top of you and doesn't go underneath you. And you save a lot of weight that way. You don't, you're not carrying around as much fabric or as much down. Um, but then, there, Yeah, then you rely on your sleeping pad for your insulation right. on your underside. So that's a little brief overview, overview between quilts versus bags. There's a lot of personal preference that goes into that. I know, for instance, my wife, hates the feeling of a quilt. She likes being totally enclosed in something. Um, personally, when I was sleeping on a sleeping pad, I didn't love a quilt because I tend to move around a lot at night and when you move around, sometimes the quilt will expose you. Now, most quilts have uh, straps underneath them where you can slide the sleeping pad through so that doesn't happen. I never use those, so that might have solved that problem. I've used them, yeah, it works great. Um, so that's probably a fix for that. And now, as we like to say every episode, we are hammock campers. We don't sleep on the dirty ground. Yeah. And in a hammock, a sleeping bag is almost entirely unnecessary. Um, just the way you sleep in a hammock, the underquilt and the fabric folds up underneath you. So I couldn't imagine using a sleeping bag in a hammock. We always use quilts. Um, not to mention, it is very difficult to get into a sleeping bag and get yourself zipped up in a, in a hammock. hammock. Oh yeah, it's the very hard. Quilts are a lot easier to get into. That's one of the big advantages, especially if you're a hammock camper. And even if you're on the ground, um, you can get a quilt over you relatively simple without you know screwing around making sure that your mummy bag is all around you and the zippers are all lined up so there's a lot it's a lot easier to use so that's bags versus quilts quilts a little bit more minimalist moving on to sleeping pads and sleeping pads fall into a couple different categories the biggest one being something called uh, closed cell foam pads and then what I'll call air mattresses or air pads but that's your standard neo air something like that um, the difference between those two are the, the closed cell foam pads are definitely a lot lighter uh, and you don't have to blow them up, but they're not as insulating as something like an air pad. We, uh, we both have, we have a regular Thermarest Neo Air and then we have a four season Thermarest Neo, Neo Air X-Therm, which has some sort of reflective or insulating thing inside of it so you can it's use like it in the winter. Yeah, it's a reflective material, helps with the... Uh insulation capabilities? Most people starting out in backpacking are probably gonna start with something like a Neo Air or uh, Big Agnes makes them and REI makes them too. It's just like an air pad. Um, and that's probably what we, what we recommend for the person just starting out. And then if, if you sleep on your back a lot, you might be able to get away with a closed cell foam pad. We both on the ground sleep on our sides and when you sleep on your side, you need, you just need more space so your hip doesn't dig into the ground. So you need something like an air pad. Um, but if you're a dedicated back sleeper, you might, and, and you're a dedicated ultralight person, you might do a closed cell foam pad. Um, it's really just personal preference. Yeah. And 
I will say though that that foam is very insulating, but I, I think the main advantages to foam is that it's easy to set up, it's less bulky in certain situations, and it can be a little bit cheaper cost-wise than a, yeah. a sleeping pad. Uh, like an inflatable pad, but there's so many different inflatable pads out there with different um, levels of insulation in them for different times of the year. Tons of different companies make them. You just got to go into, you know, your local outdoor retailer and, and check them out or get online and do some research. We've had good luck with the, with the Thermarest Neo Airs. Yeah, Thermarest uh, is a good company and they have a lifetime warranty. Um, and the one thing that kind of sucks about those versus a closed cell foam pad is if you're out there and you spring a leak in it, you got you got a little situation you have to deal with. Yep, and I've I've had that happen, and luckily I did have a patch kit with me. So yeah, if you if you're going out with an air pad, definitely bring a patch kit. Um, for those hammock campers there, check out. I'll throw a link right up there. We do a good video on a, just an overview on some different under quilts. So in a hammock. Um, you can use a pad, you can use a closed cell foam pad if you wanted to, but most people will prefer an underquilt. Yeah, and shout out to uh, Tim Watson and the boys. They use their uh, sleeping pads in their yeah, hammocks. Yeah, they use their sleeping pads in their hammocks, which is totally doable. Um, in our opinion, not as comfortable or easy, um, but it does give you some other options like being able to go to the ground if you really need to. Being on top of sleeping pads, if you're just getting into backpacking, you're gonna come across something called R-value. Um, R value, you can think of it as how insulating a material is, and it stands for the um, R value is the ability of something to resist heat flow. So something that has a higher R value is gonna insulate you more. Um, that's a common thing when you look at sleeping pads. Um, let, let, so most people will get a, a three season or a 20 degree sleeping pad like the Neo Air, um, but something like the Neo Air X-Therm has a higher R value because it's a four season, and I've used both of them, and. and the X-Therm is a fantastic pad. You can use that in the dead of winter and your back will not get cold. It's very nice. But something to look out, if, you, if you're trying to compare two different pads, look at the R value. The one with the higher R value is gonna insulate you more and uh, you're gonna lose heat. You're gonna, you're gonna lose heat slower in something that has a higher R value. Yeah. But that's a common term you'll come across. Yeah, and, and you know, where where are you gonna be backpacking at? What times of year are you gonna be backpacking at? What are the temperature ranges? That you, you should use all that when you're when you're trying to determine which sleeping pad is right for you. Most people from a beginning backpacker standpoint are gonna get a good three season twenty degree pad. Yeah, and maybe like a 20 or 30 degree like sleeping bag or, yeah. or quilt. One of the final topics we want to cover here is, and this is you're this is going to be a very common decision you're going to have to make is, are you going to buy some type of synthetic sleeping bag or quilt, or are you going to buy a down sleeping bag or quilt? So synthetic versus down. So there's there's positives and negatives to each of them. So let's talk about synthetic. So first of all. Synthetic is generally cheaper than down. So you're gonna see synthetic products priced a little bit more affordably. Um, synthetic is also a little bit bulkier than down. It doesn't compress as much. It doesn't compress as much and it weighs more than down. So with down, you get a lighter sleeping bag or sleeping pad. With synthetic, you generally get a heavier sleeping pad or sleeping, ba sleeping bag or quilt, sorry. Um, one of the other advantages to synthetic materials is that even if synthetic gets wet, it generally still insulates you. That's like the huge advantage That's synthetic. Like military grade stuff is synthetic. Because when you're going out there and you get wet, it still keeps you warm. Yep. So down, now there's a lot of there's a lot of cool advancements with down, like they have uh, down tech treated down, yeah. but just from basic beginner backpacking, down in general when it's wet will not insulate you or will insulate you poorly. So if you're like in a climate that gets a lot of rainfall, maybe the Pacific Northwest yeah. or something like that, maybe synthetic's a better product for you. Um, we typically always go with down because we love the weight savings. Um, and, and the compressibility. And the compressibility. Now down, like I said, it's gonna cost a lot more, um, but it's gonna be lighter. Synthetic's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be a little bit heavier, and it's not gonna compress as well. So it's just a decision that you have to make. All outdoor big box stores carry both different types of products. Um, all cottage companies also, generally, uh, a lot of them do offer synthetic 
hand down products yeah. now. So, I mean, do your research. Where, where are you gonna be at? Um, and figure out what, what's the best choice for you. I would say more commonly, you see people starting out getting a synthetic material yeah. just because it's a little bit more widely available and it's a little cheaper. So, um, if you can afford it and your climate supports it, I would definitely recommend down. Yeah, we um, like personally, a lot of our non backpacking stuff, like this jacket, we tend to favor, favor synthetic over that because it's cheaper and another advantage to synthetic down is you can wash it easier. You can wash down stuff, but it's a little bit more technical. You have to use different detergents and it's down just more fragile. Yeah. Um, versus our backpacking stuff is almost entirely actual down, but our non-backpacking stuff is more synthetic. Yeah, synthetic can take a little bit more abuse. A lot more abuse. Yeah. So one of the last things to talk about when you're talking about down, not synthetic down, actual down, and you're gonna see this with every piece of clothing or anything you look at is something called fill power. Uh, you're gonna see 700 fill power, 800 fill power, 900 fill power. What is fill power? Well, uh, the actual number, so let's say you have an 800 fill power jacket. That means that one ounce of that 800 fill power will take up 800 cubic inches of space. What does that mean? All it means is the higher the fill power, the more it's gonna insulate, the larger the little clusters of down are gonna be, and the larger that the item is gonna loft. So in general, when you're looking at the fill power, the higher the fill power, the warmer the thing's gonna be. But it's gonna be a little bit more bulky, and it might weigh a little bit more. Um, that's one thing I always never really knew was, you know, you see a 750 fill power jacket or a 900 power fill jacket, just know that the higher the number, the uh, the more the item is gonna loft because the bigger the clusters of down are and the more space it's gonna take up when it insulates. So that's just a little blurb on fill power. Yeah, and I think also the higher the fill power, it's it's a, it's a higher quality down, so you're gonna pay, yeah. you're gonna pay more for it. It's more it. expensive. So, but you'll get you'll get some, uh, it, since it's more efficient, you'll, uh, you'll get a nice, you'll get a pretty sweet product out of it. And uh, they may not, might not have to use as much down, so you might get some weight savings as well. So that's it for us. That is a quick, I know we covered a lot of terms that people might not be aware of, but that's like our quick backpacking basics on sleeping systems, down insulation, quilts, pads, sleeping bags, everything like that. Um, let us know what you guys prefer. Do you like synthetic down? Do you like natural down? Or do you like sleeping pads uh, versus closed cell phone pads? Whatever, everyone's different. Um, thanks again for watching. Like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe, and as always, we post a bunch more stuff on Instagram, so thanks for watching. Yep.